Here's part three of our conversation with Kasim Sultan. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. He was a longtime member of Utopia with Todd Rundgren, also a longtime collaborator with Todd as a solo artist. Played with Joan Jett, The New Cars, Meatloaf, Blue Oyster Cult, Scandal, Hollow Notes, and a lot more. Here's Kasim Sultan. Like building a song like, you know, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, to me, like, oh my God. Like, I remember my first reaction was like, what? My, who would have thought of that? Well, just. Jim was, a, Jim was a big baseball fan. Jim was a huge fan, and, and to his credit, so was Meatloaf. But uh, but Jim, you know, Jim had the concept for we're going to do a play by play in the middle of this song, and we're going to have have it, uh, uh, you know, a metaphor for being in the back seat of a. This is brilliant, you know, being in the back seat of, of of a car at the lake with your uh, with your girlfriend or with your high school girlfriend uh, girlfriend, um, and. It just worked, you know. One more thing about that. I know that you had said in a previous interview that so they so Todd calls you just and you said he just said, come on down here. You got to come down here. No, uh, no, no, no. He called me. I was I was living with Roger Powell up in Woodstock mm -hmm. um, and Todd had had agreed to do this production and uh, they didn't have a band. Uh, Jim knew that he wanted. Roy Bitten and Max Weinberg from the E Street Band because the music in his mind uh, mirrored uh, Bruce in, in in a way, um, and uh, but he they they didn't have a bass player and they didn't have a guitar player so of course Todd played guitar and me being in in proximity to uh, to the recording studio and the rehearsing and and at that point I, I was six months about six months into the band and I had kind of proven myself as a worthy um, uh, uh, addition. So Todd called me and said, you want to play bass on a record, uh, which, you know, even, even now it's funny that it's funny. I'm thinking about it now. And, and uh, I'm like, he wouldn't have asked me to play if he didn't think I was any good. I always say, man, you got to do the work to get in the room. You know, you do have to do the work to get in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one last thing, uh, when you yep. went down and Ellen Foley was there and Meat mm -hmm. was there and they played, they went through the whole album for you guys, yes. right? Yeah, they, they played the entire album from top to bottom. I'll never forget my, I, I, was, I was in Woodstock and I was with my, my, my wife then and, um, and we sat there and listened to them. Uh, uh, Jim played piano and uh, Meatloaf sang, and Rory Dodd, who was a fellow Canadian, and Ellen Foley, um, uh, the Paradise Girl. They, they not only sang everything, all the background vocals and all the, uh, all the parts that they heard, um, but they also acted it out. They acted out Paradise by the Dashboard Light in the accountant's office that we were on the second floor of the accountant's office in Bearsville Records. Um, at a little upright piano, and it was a trip. It was a real, I wish somebody would have filmed that. That's crazy. I had no idea mm -hmm. about that part. They acted, they yeah. had it down. They had it down at, at least yeah. the theatrical. Oh, wow, it's crazy. Which takes us to track two, Unsung. Um, yeah. You know, folks have a tendency when I used to be a, a, a sorry, but a, a music critic for quite a few years. And I usually, only wrote about things I loved. I said, listen, I don't want to pan on people. I mean, their parents, I remember I wrote a thing on Michael Buble once and his father uh, got a hold of me and he says, oh, thanks, man. That's great. And it reminded me again, I'm going, listen, I know people need to pan on things that are bad. I'm just not the guy who's going to do it. But uh -huh. unsung, I used to write this all the time going, you know, the artist is great, but let's check out this. This is a machine with many moving parts as Don Henley would say to the audience, you'd never know how, what, I mean, what it takes to build one of these things. Uh, and you've been one of those guys you know, that, 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 that helped it get to where it needed to get. And you did the work, that's why you were in the room. But Unsung, is that, your, are you singing about your career? Yeah, uh-huh. Um, again, kudos to Phil Thornalley, um, who, well, I came in with the idea, I'm, I'm a big, uh, by the way, I like Michael Buble. I think he's great. Um, and, and I'm a big Sarah Bar Bareilles fan. And, uh, and there was something about her, uh, her song, I'm not gonna write you a love song that paralleled 
uh, something in my life, w which happened 40 years ago. Um, and and the, the only hit that Utopia ever had was a song called Set Me Free that I wrote um, about getting out of a record contract and uh, wound up being a top 20 hit for the band. Uh, only The only top 20 hit the band ever had. Um, and Sarah Bareilles' I'm Not Gonna Write You a Love Song is about not writing a love song. The record company said, you need a love song for this record. So, um, so I like the tune. And what we do as musicians, Todd says this, uh, we're, I'm on tour with Todd right now. And he says this every night. He said, um, he said, hello, he wrote, hello, it's me. And he knew it was a good song because he stole it. Um, and it, it, and it, he says this to the audience. And if you haven't figured it out by now, that's what musicians do. We steal. Um, and depending on who we steal from, it means that whether the song is going to be really good or it's going to be not so good. Uh, he won't, he doesn't mention who he stole. Hello, it's me from, but, um, so, so I sat down to try to rewrite, I'm not going to like write you a love song. Um, and that's how I came up with the music for unsung. Now I brought the song into Phil and Phil said, Oh, that's quite nice. That's very, very, that's lovely. Um, and at that time I was working on a television pilot along with my manager and uh, uh, a director by the guy, uh, name of uh, Michael Simon, um, who does, uh, he did all the VH1 storytellers uh, and a bunch of music videos. And uh, he, he directs a show called Ridiculousness uh, on cable TV. In any case, uh, we were writing this pilot. And, uh, and, and I said, you know, we need a, we need a theme song for the, uh, for the show. And, uh, and I mentioned it to Phil and he's, and he took my idea. That was the Sarah Bareilles ripoff and, um, and came up with the idea of unsung. And then we co-wrote the lyrics for the song. And so it is very extremely autobiographical. The television pilot has turned into a podcast. Uh, it's a series podcast called unsung. And it will be released in February of 2022. Um, there is already six episodes uh, in post-production right now. And it is a really, really cool um, uh, uh, show, series, podcast that's based on my life with actors. And we'll see what happens. When I talk to, uh, thank God I looked his name up because all, when I talked to uh, Glenn Shorick of the Little River Band, their lead singer, uh -huh. I remember a few years before I learned that I was saying it wasn't Glenn Sharrock or it's Randy Bachman. It's not Randy Bachman, even though he doesn't seem to care. How many times has your name been butchered? You know, so many times that there are times when I don't correct people. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's not just my first name; it's my first and second name. So, um, so a lot of times, and this. I, I, I tell this story a couple of times when I was a child growing up. I, I grew up on Staten Island in, in New York City. And uh, I grew up around Tommy, Joey, Billy, Bobby, Charlie, Jimmy. Um, yeah. And Johnny. And um, those are when in Rome so, uh, names, because when you're there, that's what people name their kids. Right. So so at seven years old, I get to use the phone for the first time my mom says yes you can call your friend on the telephone and uh and i call up my friend joey and i say and i, I, I hi this uh hi joey's mom um this is Cassim. is is joey there who uh Cassim. catherine no Cassim. joey doesn't know any by that name anyone by that name goodbye and, and hangs up on it uh, still to this day i'll never forget as long as i live so uh, I was I, I was kind of ostracized a little bit because there were no chasms when when we were growing up in the early 60s in New York City. Um, now, maybe it's a different story. Uh, but but then it was it, it was uh, I got in more fights about my name. So to answer your uh, your I don't know if it was a question or not, but uh, it, it's it, it's frustrating because I get, I get called Kasim or Kasmin or uh, Kasim, um, but, uh, and then Sultan, they, they usually misspell my second name. They usually spell it S-U-L-T-A-N, but it's actually S-U-L-T-O-N. Um, and I kind of wonder 
I kind of wonder if, if, if I was kind of um, somewhat hindered by having a different name and especially a, a Muslim sounding name. Um, but it is my name and, uh, and I'm stuck with it and I never changed it. So, uh, so, you know, while at, at one point I was, I cursed my dad for giving it to, to me. I, now I thank him because a lot of people say, man, that's a cool name. And once you hear my name and you know my history, you never forget it. Yeah. If you want to hear the entire interview via podcast or video, the links are in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Thank you.